Welcome to the Of Mice and Men debate. The resolution resolved. Of Mice and Men should continue to be a part of the eighth grade curriculum. We spoke not only in sites and at the emotional, unemotional level, but we also have knowledge of the time period as we study the Great Depression. Both are negative and stereotypical portrayals of these worlds. Also, there is a large amount of hatred and violence contradicting our school's core Quaker values. Okay, that's it. Back to your positions, please. It is important to read it, and in my semester, it clearly is. Although you may not claim it was a classic, it, it definitely was. It is considered one of America's greatest novels. Grapes of Rats is just one example of the many classic books that could give us the same history and culture of mice and men without denying the values our school has taught us. Every time we came across a situation in a book, whether it was sexism or violence, or any other heavy topic and we ignored them, we would never know how to face them in real life. The depiction of Curly's wife also portrayed women as being instigators of most situations. This is called victim blaming and it is still a huge problem today. In history class, we've only learned statistics and facts about unemployment during the Great Depression and migrant workers. Because of this, reading of Mice and Men is important for us to read in our curriculum because we should be able to see an actual point of view and analyze what it was actually like. He writes that she wore thick bullseye glasses and she wore a huge gingham paper in the pockets. Steinbeck is repeating himself, not for dramatic effect, but because he is making an easily avoidable stylistic mistake. How can you turn um, the bad scene about Curly's wife when she gets introduced into a learning experience for 8th grade students? There's obviously a lot of sex and, a sexism in the book, but there's also a lot of sexism in real life. At the time, sexism was a norm in world. Sexism really is not okay. Do we get an important message out of this book? If so, what is the message? This book. So we get messages about friendship and about what you do for your friends. We get messages about mentally disabled people, we get messages about racism in the book, loneliness, we get messages about migrant workers, how hard it is for them to work, how hard it is for them to get jobs, how lonely they can be. The BFS values show that we should be exposed to very representation of individuals, whether or not it's negative or positive. Do you believe it is not important to be exposed to such views? We, we feel that we should be exposed to those views in a book that doesn't support those views and contradicts them. Do you think that the literary devices or the, the actual content of the book is a more important element to include the grade syllabus? This book sh does show us what happens in the past and we, um, we haven't said that this is not a classic book, but it, it, um, uh, there are other books that have the, the same kind of language and words that we can learn from. We are now going to have the closing arguments, two minutes each, first from the team in favor of the resolution, followed by the team opposed. Some may argue that this book is irrelevant or brings up a taboo subject. However, it is in no way unbeneficial. Actually, it's the opposite. Of my cement teaches us lessons of sacrifice, friendship, and poverty, which are all situations that we would come across in daily life. It is critical for us, eighth graders, to learn how to deal with these situations and not to be blindsided. Ignoring sexism and racism won't make them go away. If we don't read a book just because it has some difficult topics to discuss, one misses out on multiple life lessons. As we've made quite clear, there are many reasons why of mice and men should not be included in the eighth grade English syllabus in the future. It perpetuates stereotypes towards women and the mentally handicapped, is rather simple in both concept and style, and contradicts our school's own values, which we normally hold to a high standard. All right, so the judges have a unanimous decision. They are going to explain to us which team they felt made the stronger case and explain why. We um, unanimously voted in favor of the anti-team because uh, we thought that their opening and closing arguments were really strong and clear and provided like, the evidence that we needed to understand like, their side of the story and why it should be included in the syllabus. Um, you are also clear, sophisticated, and strong. Um, yeah. Uh, you used a lot of evidence from the book to your advantage, which was a very good. And your rebuttals were really good. Thank you, judges, for your hard work. For me, thank them as well. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, the debate is officially over, and now we can actually launch into a discussion. I'm curious to hear what you folks actually think, despite whatever side you're